My name's Joey Allen, and I battle methamphetamines, alcohol, cocaine, prescription pills as painkillers, Adderall pills, pretty much anything kind of chemicals that I could ever get my hands on, I've done it and I've battled it, and this is my story. I'm from uh, Coweta, Oklahoma, born in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, I am a addict and alcoholic in recovery, and I am a firm believer in Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to tell my story um, just so maybe just one person can learn something from it, from my mistakes and not have to do their own mistakes. But I'll start out um, as a young boy. Um, I did go to church. My grandma picked me up as a young kid. Um, she brought me to church every Sunday. Um, my parents, um, as a young kid, they were, um, weren't in, active in the church. They, my dad was an alcoholic and my mom, she liked to smoke marijuana. But as about seven or eight years old, we all got together and, and they started going to church. So I grew up in church um, probably up until I started having to work when I was 17, right before I got out of high school. Um, I was, did sports in high school. Um, baseball, football, wrestling. I was all active and all kinds of stuff like that. I was all around good kid. Um, did party, you know, on the weekend and stuff like that. Um, but growing up, I couldn't have asked for a better childhood. You know, we weren't rich, we were poor, but mom and dad did, you know, they did the best they could for us and I'm grateful for that. But um, as I got older, um, I uh, drifted out of the church. And, for a few years, and um, but it wasn't that long. Around 1998, um, I found my way back to Christ again and asked Him to be my Lord and Savior and forgive me of my sins. And and uh, I did really good in the church for that. And then about 2000, 2001, um, we got out of church again, and um, just for certain reasons, of, I don't even know really why. Why we did? We just did. Um, and of course, whenever you get out of church, the devil comes to get you. But um, I got a really good job. Um, I got married. I um, was married for about three years. And um, things happened. And she let, uh, she uh, just, uh, we got divorced. And I took it, took it, took it a really, really hard way. Um, by this time, I was around 27 years old when I got married. So instead of following God, um, and doing the right things when we got divorced, I, I took it so bad on myself that I just started going to nightclubs, started getting involved with uh, ecstasy, and the ecstasy progressed into other, um, any kinds of, uh, anything I could get my hands on. I didn't really care about my life then. I was very destructive. I led a very destructive life for, um, for a good portion of about four years solid uh, of just madness and um, I met my wife that I have now. I'm so grateful for her. I put her through a lot these past years but we've been up and down and through that she straightened me up for a few years and then a neighbor moved in and um, they were getting me, I started hanging out and drinking with them a lot and they started giving pills and then I started back into methamphetamines again and uh, it was just madness for for so many years and um, I me and my uh, wife we weren't married at this point in time but we she, we lived together and um, she kicked me out I do good for a while she'd let me back in and it went on and on for like that and she finally just gave me the boot for forever really it was we weren't I didn't even plan on ever getting back together but I picked up a case and I was on probation, suspended sentence, and then while I was on suspended sentence, I picked up a DUI. And at the point in time of that DUI, I thought my life was over. I thought I was going to prison, but it turned out I'm grateful for that officer for giving me that DUI because it put me in jail again. It revoked my probation, so they put me, um, I was going to be in jail for a long time, but um, not even three days two or three days I went in front of the judge my attorney wanted to come in and they wanted to he wanted them to drop my bail my bond so I could get out which I didn't think I was going to get out anyways but 
I didn't even get in front of the judge. They went in the judge's chambers. My attorney came out and he said they want you to go to a program. And I already had been talking to my mom saying I need to go to a program, but I don't, don't know, or to a rehab facility of some sort because I didn't, but I couldn't do it because of all my fines and stuff. Well, this gave me a way, it was court ordered um, to go. So it, that was what I needed to be. That's what I needed to do. And I had my options of, of ones to go to and um, I wanted a long-term one. So I picked one that was a year. Um, it was faith-based, so I thought it, well, it can't be too bad. I know I needed a long-term, long, long-term sobriety. And this was in 2016. Um, so I went ahead and went for that. It was tough. The, the actual, being at the rehab facility, the treatment center wasn't bad at all. It, I loved everybody there. But what they did was we had to go there and we had t to pay for our place there. We had to go work at a, a chicken processing plant. And that was the worst job. I don't know how I prayed and prayed and prayed every night and I made it through that whole year. I don't know how I did it, just through God. That, I mean, it was the worst job in the world, you know. I mean, I imagine there's some out there that's worse, but for me, it was every night praying. And I prayed every day while I was there. And um, I made it through that year. Um, I went into Oxford House, um, about a year and a half in Oxford House, sober living in Tulsa, after I got out of that treatment center. Um, I did really good in Oxford House. Um, and then my wife, while I was in the treatment center, we, me and my wife now, we started talking again and, and we developed a relationship. And once I got out of the re treatment center in Oxford House, we got really, really close. And so we planned our wedding and everything. And um, we planned, I would move out of Oxford House in the same month that I did that, we were gonna get married. And uh, so that was our plan. And everything worked out, but I moved out of Oxford House, didn't have no accountability. A guy at work offered me an Adderall, uh, and I was just me and myself not doing my program like I know how to do. Um, I said, oh yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, I'll be able to do that, that'd be cool. Um, one's too many and a thousand's never enough, that's how they say it. And that's absolutely true. I uh, took that pill that day, and I went back to square one where I was before I ever went to treatment. I figured out who he got his pills from that same night, and I went and bought 25 of them thinking I was gonna um, take them throughout, through a long period of time, but I ate them all that one night. That's the kind of uh, addict I am. And um, man, my wife found out about it. We, we barely went through with the marriage and I straightened up and it was ever since 2000, we got, you know, ever since we got married in 2018, it's, I've just put, I just took her back to where it was at the beginning. And the only reason that she never really gave me the boot was because we were married at this time, so. I'm thankful for the woman that she is and keeping me around and, and got me through this. But how I ended up again, I never did straighten up. And um, I'd go on trips or go on binges and then I'd do good for a week and go on binges and it was just too much. And on e Easter of this year, um, I went to work and I was working, working and I was stressed out and um, for some reason, I decided to go to the liquor store and get some get some whiskey, thinking that she wouldn't find out. And um, of course, when she did, she uh, told me to leave. And I I had so I'd already had so much so many uh, two or three bottles in my truck. So I went out and I was mad at her for making me leave. And I just drank everything. And how in the world? I don't know how I'm just thankful for the Lord that I didn't hurt anybody um, on this point in time. Um, but somehow on that point, I don't know where I got it from. I met up with, a, uh, I, don't, I drank so much alcohol, I don't remember. I got a hold of a whole bunch of meth. Um, I did all, like, I don't know how much I did, but it, w it was enough where I, I just went on a crazy, I went, uh, I can't remember much of it, but I know I was running through the woods. Uh, my clothes was all torn up. Um, somehow I made it back and, and I don't know how many days it was. My wife found me in the ditch. Um, she took me from there, took me home, cleaned me up and we went, she took me, I told her I needed to go to the hospital. So I spent about six days in St. Francis Hospital recovering 
and I don't really really remember much of that but um, thank goodness for all that happening um, when I got out of there we set up a program where um, I go to Valley Hope it was my second treatment center and um, through Valley Hope it was really really good uh, I learned a lot and it was just something I had to do otherwise I, she was going to divorce me and there's no telling which direction I would have went um, but I've uh, through this I've uh, been on the right track ever since um, I've been through some battles um, I've got um, going through Celebrate Recovery um, I've been doing online uh, classes and counseling and just trying to do everything I can so I can learn everything I can and because um, I want to get to where I can just do go to be outreach for kids uh, maybe go to high schools and um, just drug awareness and um, for kids to uh, learn that there is a way you can come out of it just because and even if you that you've been in a long-term recovery and you mess up um, I am a, a, a witness to where you can just, you can just, you don't give up. That's pretty much all I can say is like, never give up, no matter how bad you get down on yourself. Um, I like I was saying, I went through, I've been going through some, definitely some trials this year. Um, my father passed away in June. Um, that's the hardest thing I've ever had to go through in my life. Um, I didn't it was non expected and it's just been a fight. Um but I've been doing doing the right things. Um keep your faith in God and, and that's all I can do and uh to just for kids out there, the younger kids, um if you can get anything that you can get when you're young, hold on to it. Um just stay stay active in the whatever kind of recovery you got. Um if you do this if you do happen to slip up and go go back out there again just remember what you learned and don't give up you can come back um all the places you know that find somebody there's so many people that'll help you and so many people that's been down the same road as you um it's just just never give up um i'm thankful for what god's done for me uh he's gave me way too many chances I mean, I've just been way, way, way out there, and, and I was so down on myself this last time, thinking I'm back in the same spot I was. I can't believe it. I, you know, I would go into that treatment facility, and um, I was just devastated. I was so down on myself. I, you know, forgiving yourself is one of the hardest things that you could do. Like, you know, just. I, for years I thought about that. I, was, I would never forgive myself for what I've done, you know, the pain I caused people, the people I hurt, you know, just the, the hurt that I, just the shame that I put on myself. Um, and once I got, out, got, got back clean long-term sobriety, I was so happy with that and I forgave myself and got back to that, you know, the same person that, that I was, like the clean and sober me and good things just start happening. Um, this, when you're in uh, good sobriety and you're doing the right things, good things happen to you. Um, I'll just tell a story that is a really a God thing, that it's a, just an amazing thing. We've been going to the church for a while. Um, I've been clean for a, a year, or uh, no, I'll take that back, two years. I wanted to be in Oxford House for a whole complete year before I got my driver's license back because I knew I, I was doing things the right way. Um, so come that year, um, I had my tax money. We were we found a car I was going to get. We couldn't get the money on that Saturday, so um, we had to wait till Monday to get it. Well, we were going to get it, but the next Sunday we went to church and they had me come up on stage and give them my testimony. And I was up there on ch at church just giving my testimony and got finished with it and was getting ready to walk off stage. Well, the gentleman came up and put his hand on my and the, pushed me kind of back up on stage. And he, he was shaking and stuff like that. And I was like, what? I didn't know what was going on. 
and uh, he started talking and stuff. He's like, I, he goes, I did not know why the Lord told me to bring this with me to work, or to not work, to church today. But when you were doing your testimony, he goes, I knew exactly what it was for. And he gave me the title and the keys to my Mountaineer that I drive today. Just handed it straight over to me. And it, he didn't know, he barely even knew who my name was. It was like, he didn't know me. He just gave me the car. Um, and that was just, that's a whole God thing right there. He didn't, even, he didn't even know that I was looking for a car. And that's how God works. And I took that um, Mountaineer, and I was still in the Oxford house. And we all the got pretty much every guy in my house could fit in it. And we went to meetings and went everywhere. And it was big enough to haul the whole house around. And so I used it for, you know, the goodness, goodness and because the car that I was going to get was a little one. So <laughs> so it was just amazing how God worked through that. Uh, That's like, I mean, when I tell that story, it's just, it gives me chills. And um, but that was kind of backtracked a little bit on that, but I wanted to throw that in there. Um, just good things happen to you when you start doing good, and, and God, God's, God rewards you for that stuff. And I'm, I'm you know, I've just, I, I've been through it. I know, and I know whenever I start messing up and going back out there again, He'll take it away too. So, um, I mean, I've lost house, I lost my houses, lost my cars, lost my motorcycles through drug addiction and alcoholism, and, and I gain it back and lose it. And it's like, just don't give up. Keep your faith in God. Um, if you do have trouble, like I said earlier, if you slip up, don't give up. That's all. That's my main thing for everybody. Just don't give up. Um, but now, um, I'm excited about life again. I'm feeling good about myself again. Uh, feeling back on top of the world. Um, and I don't want to go back that direction again. And I know I have to do to do the things I can and keep my faith in God to um, stay on track. Don't lose focus. Do the right thing every day, one day at a time. Not one week at a time, not one month at a time. Just one day at a time is all it takes. Really, guys, just stay with it. Don't give up. If you have trouble, don't give up. There's always somebody there. Even I can put my name out there. Uh, if you can look me up on Facebook at Joey Allen, um, you'll find me on there. If you need any kind of a uh, accountability partner, I'll be there for you. Um, I'm just thankful to to be in this point in my life to uh, hopefully help somebody that needs it. And uh, even if I don't even ever know that they did, just just the, the thought of me helping people is the re the best thing about life right now and um just all anybody no matter how old you are no matter how young you are just don't give up